so the resident of a senior living community that is located in Bethesda, Maryland. And I'm just gonna give you a couple of points that give you a broad overview of what type of community Maplewood Park Place is. But when we bring on our panel, you're gonna to get to know them a little bit better. And you're gonna certainly get to know what it's like living at Maplewood Park Place a little bit better. But Maplewood Park Place, like I said, is in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, Montgomery County, Maryland. It's a continuum of care under one roof. So there's independent assisted and nursing all under one roof. There's 207 homes uh, in this community. And one unique thing about Maplewood Park Place is it's owned by the residents. Now, even though there's a continuum of care, a person can't just enter the assisted living or nursing right off the street. The, um, the residents enter this community independent, but they have the benefit of having assisted and nursing there on the same campus under one roof. So I hope I did a halfway decent job there of describing Maplewood Park Place, but now I'd like to bring on three people that can do a much better job than I can. And th that is Diane Saw, Derek Hover, and Donald Berlin. So um, let me prompt each of you to come on. And I'm really excited to get to know each of you a little bit better. Um, let's see, we've got Derek, Donald, and Diane. This is, this is amazing. You guys did a great job of, uh, of getting back on. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have this discussion with you and learn a little bit more about yourselves and more about Maplewood Park Place. And for those of you who might be interested in Derek's background, that is the exterior of Maplewood Park Place. So it's uh, clearly a beautiful community. But um, you know, we have a rule on these discussions that ladies go first. So Diane, I am going to um, uh, throw it out to you. Um, what we'll do first is get to know you all a little bit better, and then we'll dive into how you began researching and making the decision to move to a place like Maplewood Park Place. And then we'll talk about what life is like there in the community. And to anybody in the audience, great opportunity to just ask questions. You can type them in at any point in time and uh, we'll make sure that we address them. So uh, Diane, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, uh, family, careers, uh, hobbies, interests. Um, I, I'd love to hear your story. All right, my name is uh, Diane Saar. I'm, uh, I grew up in the Northern Virginia area. I went uh, to college at the University of Michigan, which I'm proud of. I became a speech pathologist. I worked in that capacity for two years until my youngest, uh, I got married right, right, after, right after I graduated college. Uh, after two years, I stayed home and raised my children for a number of years. And then um, I went back as a classroom teacher, because as a speech therapist in those days, I had to be an itinerant teacher and I had to go from school to school and I didn't want to be that far away from home. So I was in the classroom for a number of years. Uh, when my youngest one started school, I went back to college and got a master's degree in reading and I became a reading specialist always in the public school systems, it's, you know, that's where I worked. Um, then uh, when my children grew up and were out of the house and uh, life went on, my husband who was a financial planner and I uh, thought about retirement and we moved to Charlottesville, Virginia. We had a lovely retirement there, we, we, we loved it. We uh, uh, made friends. We lived there for 14 years. We had a social life. We had a life there and we loved the Charlottesville area. Um, 
but my husband uh, started showing signs of dementia. And uh, the ne neurologist felt that we should start looking around for a place when the time came, we wouldn't be able to take care of him. So that started our journey with, with looking around. Of course, okay. Okay, I'll stop. This is there. great. Yeah, no, no. It, it, you know, we want the audience to be on the, the, the edge of their seat. And so we're going to, let's stop there. And then okay. we're going to come back and revisit okay. your journey, learning about the, you know, the horrible news that, that, that strikes so many individuals um, uh, of, with dementia and some of the, the challenges and solutions that you've discovered in that journey. So uh, that was a great overview. Tough act to follow there with the Diane uh, gentlemen, but uh, let's, let's go to Derek next. And uh, Derek, uh, if you could give us a little bit of an overview leading up to the decisions that led to think about Maplewood Park Place. Sure. Um, I'm a retired psychiatrist and my wife is a retired um, special education teacher. We've lived in this area for many years, although I was originally from Ohio and my wife was from here. Uh, but we were living in a big house uh, and our children had long ago grown, grown up and uh, developed their own families in other places. And I got tired of taking care of a big house with the gutters and the uh, furnace and uh, the shrubs and the lawn. Um, eventually, uh, really having to um, uh, uh, select other people to do this. Uh, and it got to be a lot, pulling weeds and so on. My wife began to get tired of cooking and uh, we were in our early 80s. And at that point, it was either moved to a, a apartment building, which would be very nice, or uh, to a uh, continuing care facility like this, uh, where we would have our independent living by our own place. And then if the time, if and when the time came that we needed um, assisted living or skilled nursing care, or uh, just um, from uh, hospitals uh, rehab care, we could all, we could both be in the same place under the same roof. Wow. We moved here Derek. three years ago and we love it here. That, that's great, Derek. And uh, now let me ask you, um, do, uh, do you and your wife have uh, children or? Oh, yes, yes. We have uh, three children, one in California, one in Annapolis, and one in Massachusetts. Oh, okay, great. Um, but but you, you were living prior to Maplewood Park Place here in the DC metro area? Yes, yes, in the area here. And, okay. uh, and they grew up here and then moved elsewhere. Great, great. Okay, well, man, you guys are really good at, at putting together very succinct uh, overviews of your, of your lives. And I know there's a lot more to those stories, but um, let's, uh, let's, let's go to Donald Berlin next. And Donald, if you wanna tell us a little bit about your, your life prior to moving to Maplewood, and then we'll dive in more to how you guys researched and made the decision to, to move. Hi, I'm uh, Don Berlin. I grew up in Canada where I was born, born in Montreal, raised in Toronto, and uh, found my way going to graduate school in Cincinnati and ultimately settling in three communities, Roanoke, Virginia, Allentown, Pennsylvania, and Baltimore. Uh, I am um, a retired rabbi. That's why I was in different communities. And my wife is a retired social worker. We uh, retired 20 years ago and uh, moved to the eastern shore of Maryland into a lovely house and enjoyed living there enormously. We were on a golf course, had a very active social life, was in, involved in a lot of activities and uh, found our, our lives somewhat towards Washington, largely because we have a son living here. So we come, as I say, to visit the grandchildren and we 
in, in the course of time found going back and forth to the Eastern shore to be difficult. So we found ourselves a condo. So we had two homes and that's where we were. We have two children, each are married. We have four grandchildren. Then one day my physician said to me, have you ever thought about the future? And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you're both in good health, but you know, things happen and there's a good chance they're gonna live into a very old age. And I said, so? So he said, well, you ought to think about a senior living facility. I said, I'm not ready for that yet. And he said to me, you don't wanna go when you need it, you wanna go well before that. And so we started our search. We ended at Maplewood. We have been here a little over two years. We love it. And uh, it's the best thing that could have happened to us. Wow. Well, boy, all three of your stories are different, but there's, there's definitely some common themes that you all share. You know, the Charlottesville and the Eastern Shore connection, the, you know, planning in, in the event for the future. I, I tell you, uh, Donald, um, I would love to have your physician come on one of our discussions because I don't think most physicians have conversations like that with their, um, their patients. And uh, I think that was a wonderful service that he provided um, to you. Um, okay, well, let's, let's get back to Diane. And uh, again, Diane, when we last left, left you, you were sharing the challenges of now th the concern about your husband's change in health and uh, walk us through uh, some of that journey of what, what happened uh, and, and what steps did, did you and your family take? Well, actually, we had uh, my husband's neurologist who uh, was treating him, but I always went to the appointments, told us almost the exact same thing. And he said that there was going to come a time that, I that it would be difficult for me to take care of him and that we should look around uh, for a place. And it bowled me over because we were both so active in our own ways, uh, doing our own thing. And uh, it was the last thing in the world that I had given any thought to. Um, but after he, after he uh, mentioned it, we talked about it and we realized that this is something that we do have to consider. So we looked in the Charlottesville area because we liked the area so much. Uh, and we found a comparable uh, senior facility that we liked. We called, our, we have three children, uh, all married, six grandchildren. We called the children together and told them this is what we wanted to do. And they said to us, mom, dad, you have the right, you have the right idea, but we really can't support you when you're in a, in a, in a different state, in a different community. And uh, it would be easier for us because their children were still at home at the time, if you came to the Washington area. And so that's, uh, and we, we talked about it and we realized they were right. So we came up here, did not know anyone in, this, in the uh, Maryland area at all. And we started our search and um, went to three other places before uh, we, uh, visited Maplewood and when we came in I, I know my husband's exact words he said we don't want to leave Charlottesville but if we are going to leave this is the place for us and he was right well wow. now so you you moved in uh, and um, your your husband was sh beginning to show signs of dementia, yes. correct? Yes. Um, so was there, um, when you moved in, were you uh, utilizing the care and support services at that time or did that progress a little bit later? No, we didn't when we first moved in at all. He lived with me, the two of us lived in, in our apartment and he enjoyed the, uh, the activities, the, be the benefits here as 
as did I. And we both knew that, uh, that we made the right decision, that it's really where, where we should be. And, and the, the, the best thing was that we didn't know anyone here. And we made friends so quickly. People were just so warm and friendly and giving and wanted to be part of us. We had our, our apartment renovated and we stay, I do have a daughter in this area and we stayed with her, but we would come over um, for the exercise classes, uh, for the holiday uh, get togethers. And every time we came in, people kept coming up to us and saying, stay for dinner, you know, join us or come tomorrow, we're going to have this activity or that activity. And it was just a very warm, um, homey feeling that, that we got when, um, before we even moved here. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, I, I want to come back to you and sort of learn about some of the different things that you've utilized in the community, the friendships and what have you. But let me jump back to our other two panel members, um, Derek. Uh, it's, it seems like it wasn't uh, like that you and your wife, this was basically uh, a pretty easy decision for you. Am I, am I hearing that incorrectly? But it, um, many times I talk to people and they really drag their feet a lot to make the decision, but it seems like you guys made up your mind and, and found Maplewood and, and were able to make the transition pretty easily. Well, we decided that it was time to move out of the big house. We didn't want to stay there anymore, but we wanted to stay in our nice community. So we began to look around at other uh, uh, facilities, uh, other um, life uh, care kind of uh, units like this. We really liked this one because we could buy our own unit and renovate it any way we wanted. and. Uh, but we were on the waiting list at other places too and looked around, got to know people and we already knew people here and other places. Um, and it was time for us and we knew that. So the move had to come and it was just a matter of where. We chose Maplewood Park Place here because the people are so friendly. It's just such a wonderful place and the food is great. And uh, like Diane said, uh, while we were on the waiting list, we started coming to the um, musical performances and lectures and uh, some meals. And um, it, uh, it was just a very good fit for us. And it was the right time for us. Uh, we, it was good we didn't wait till later um, because uh, we've been able to become very, very active here in committee work and even in um, uh, board involvement and that sort of thing. And it sounds like both you and Diane, you know, for those that might be wondering about the ownership aspect of Maplewood, these are two great examples of where both of you were able to customize your apartment to your needs. And, you know, that may or may not be able to occur in a non ownership style communities. So and it, uh, it goes back to my, my husband was a financial planner and the ownership aspect impressed him a great deal. He thought uh, uh, that the, the others did not offer anything like that when, uh, when we went around to the others. But let me tell you, it was not easy to leave Charlottesville. It was not easy to start packing up and, and thinking about this because neither one of us wanted to do it. You see, we were only doing it because we felt this uh, neurologist felt that this is what we needed to do. And um, it, 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 was, it was terribly difficult. Kids would come down and they'd bring boxes and we'd look sadly at the boxes when, when they came in before, uh, before we started packing. And we watched them taking things out and packing them and saying, mom, do you want this? It was very, very difficult. I, I you know, just jump up here and move in. 
the transition well, is hard. Diane, I'm glad you talked about this downsizing and moving transition. And I'm curious with Derek and Donald, actually, Donald, uh, let's jump to you. And, and if you don't mind kind of uh, piggybacking on D Diane's talking point here on moving and downsizing and making that transition. And, and I guess in your case, it was two households. You, you had an Eastern Shore and a, uh, a, a local condo. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience and, uh, and any, any tips for folks that are out there in the audience maybe. <laughs> and you said you'd like to have met that doctor. Actually, he lost me as a patient because I be, I'm now using the doctor here at Mer Maplewood oh. very conveniently. However, I don't know whether the doctor was prescient or not, but from the time we started to look, and we looked at a number of different places, lo and behold, my wife was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment. So that was sort of a, oh my goodness, it's a good thing we're really doing this. And uh, we looked at Maplewood and we liked it and we also visited and we also had meals here and we met some of the people. And I guess it's not just that the people were warm and friendly, but frankly, we had a group of people here who were very much like us, accomplished, schooled, interested in vibrant uh, living and people who thought of themselves as highly independent. When it came time to consider coming, actually doing it, and I um, very much resonated with what Diane said, it was not an easy decision. Because even though we had sort of committed to we're going to do it, would we really do it? And that is how this began. My kids came here, took a look, and they said, Dad, we're going to help you. I said, how? I said, I'm facing, I've got two homes. I couldn't afford to just move into Maplewood just like that. I'm not ready for a third mortgage. And the second thing is I've got 60 plus years of accumulation. How do I get rid of that in 45 days? They said, we'll work with you. And they did. We were able to find somebody who helped us uh, move out all of our stuff, either sell it, take it to the dump, do whatever it wanted, and instead of it costing me money, I ended up with a fairly nice check uh, for all of the stuff that I got rid of. The hardest thing for me to get rid of were my books. I had hundreds of books. Um, I have to tell you, after a couple of years, the books were a symbol to me. I still got access to whatever I need, and I haven't missed my books at all. But the difficulty was getting over that hump. And yes, uh, I'm glad we did it. I have to say, my wife now does have dementia. And so it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Uh, but even with the dementia and all, we are able to live a life that um, really speaks to the people that we have become and the people who we are. And it is giving us a quality of living that we could not possibly have if we didn't live in a community like this that is small enough to know everyone um, and where the people uh, have a certain basic understanding that it's not who they were because most of them had very exciting and freeing lives, but it's who they are now and they bring the quality of those years to the present. Wow. Um, this is, boy, you've touched on a lot of things there and um, I'm really, uh, so now, your is your wife uh, with with dementia? Is she in your apartment and being cared for, or absolutely in my apartment? And we have a private duty aide that works with us. And that was the other thing that I was delighted and surprised about. I was worried when she began to uh, enter into dementia that we would probably have to separate and that you'd go into the assisted living division, I would be in the apartment. But no, we are together. And that togetherness is keeping both of us very, very much alive and very strongly active. That's, that's, that's great. Um, now, so the community Diane, is supporting us and we're getting the needs that we have met. Fantastic. Um, Diane is uh, with your husband was the 
as his dementia progressed, it, was it a similar experience or do you, can you share with us how um, you uh, supported each other and the community supported you with the uh, with your husband's dementia? When, when I could not take care of him, uh, he went down to assist to uh, skilled nursing, which was downstairs. And it was, I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how um, fortunate that I felt. He was still in the building with me. The only thing I needed to do was take an elevator to go downstairs and I could be with him. I, and I did this five, six times a day. I'd come maybe in the morning and he was still sleeping or I'd come and he, they, they just served breakfast. So I would sit and have a cup of coffee. And as, as he deteriorated, I helped him uh, eat his breakfast. And um, then I went, I swim. So then I would go and swim and the uh, aides there would take care of him, shower him, dress him and so on. And then when I came later in the morning, he was uh, he was up and ready to go to whatever activity they were they were doing. He couldn't always participate, but he was with other people, and um, the give and take was was important to him as, as it was to me. Okay. And of course, the two children that lived in the area could come and visit him anytime during the day. And uh, you know, I went down and he was sleeping. I would just come back up and wait an hour and, and, and then go back down. If he was in another place, it would have been so much more difficult to, uh, you know, to, to stay in touch and to be with him. That's, so it's wonderful. Great. Now, um, Derek, um, uh, Donald and, and Diane have talked about, it's the three Ds here. Uh, Donald and Diane have been talking about how they've utilized some of the healthcare and supportive services there. Have you and your wife had the opportunity to, um, or the need to utilize the health services there at Maplewood Park Place at all? Uh, not at all. Uh, we, we came in reasonably healthy and uh, we don't use the health care facilities here, um, but uh, they're there when, when and if we need them. And, uh, in the meantime, we're enjoying, my wife is very social. She loves to be around the other women and other people uh, all day long, and uh, that's available to her. I got involved as, in the kind of the politics and running for the board and uh, joining a board and committees, and I've enjoyed that. It's kind of been kind of a uh, renewal for both of us. Uh, it's a livening up since we moved here um, because in our community, we were becoming the older people in the community. Younger people were moving in with younger kids, and we sort of knew them, but couldn't relate to them as peers. Well, here, uh, every evening that you want to, you have dinner with uh, two or three other people, and you learn about their really interesting stories in life. And this place is full of really interesting people. And as I said before, it's a very, very warm uh, atmosphere, a warm group. Uh, this, we've lived here three years now, uh, 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 one of the best decisions we ever made. The timing was good and moving here was good. So this is, <laughs> you, this is a common theme that all three of you have really reiterated multiple times is the people that are there. And I'm often times when I'm, talking to people that are making these decisions, I say, look, if you can find a place that's beautiful and the architecture's great, that's a bonus, but it's really the people living in those walls that you wanna focus on first. And then if you've got a wonderful facility, that's just the icing on the cake. And, and all three of you have really reiterated the connections that you've made with the, the other folks there. Um, uh, Derek, you've talked about the clubs and the organizations. Diane, you mentioned the swimming pool. Um, and uh, Dar Donald, are there um, some activities or things that you participate there at Maplewood that, that really provide purpose in your life? 
Absolutely. Uh, I'm a former semi-professional ice hockey player. So Whoa. the fact that we have a fitness room here is very important to me. The pool that Diane mentioned is an, an, is a, an indoor pool. So it's available to us all year round. And so I have that kind of background on top of the fact that I'm able to stay in the Washington area and have all the benefits of actually going to a game now and then um, where I still have season tickets. So it's, it's, it's really a, a, a nice place in life to be. As we've been talking, it occurred to me that, you know, we talk about retirement. Well, we talk about it leaving whatever job you had in whatever position you had and then going out to Troy that quote, enjoy life. Well, what does enjoy life mean throughout all the years of retirement? We have now doubled our lives considerably so that we are going to live a much longer time. And whether we like it or not, each one of us is going to go through some kind of loss. Or as one person once put it to me, you grew up, now you're growing down. And in the process of growing down, you want to still be able to retain as much of the positive as you possibly can. And that's what we've been able to do here. Those interests um, of being able to engage with people each night. Um, I, we often uh, tease around here and talk about Maplewood being our cruise ship. We have a lot of activities, good food, nice accommodations, and great opportunities to meet interesting people. The last thing is kind of uh, maybe you will, maybe you won't when you're on an actual cruise, which I've been on. But coming here, I can tell you, has been for me uh, particularly wonderful. I happen to be involved with uh, the uh, uh, edition of The Messenger, which is our in-house publication. So I enjoy writing for it and also working with the editorial crew in recruiting articles. Uh, so that allows me the opportunity to do something which I did all through my life, to write to think about ideas, to explore, and to get other people to do the same thing. Wow, no, this is great. Now, uh, Donald, you brought up loss, you know, and, you know, and, and loss comes in many, you know, forms, but Diane, the, the, the way that you've been speaking, I, do, I, I hope I'm not um, uh, interpreting it incorrectly, is, is your husband still with us? Is he still in? Yes, he passed away in 2015. Okay, so I, I, I know this is a, a sensitive topic, but one thing that I've found is, is that when couples move into communities like this and they go through loss, that the community, the, the fact that others are living there that have been through the same thing and that you're not alone and isolated, um, did you find that to be a benefit of making this decision to move it, to- It made all the difference in the world. I mean, you're in your own home and you lose someone. Everyone is there for you for a week or two. And then they all go back to whatever they're doing and you, you're alone. Here, you're never alone. If you wanna come back to the apartment and be by yourself, that's fine. But as soon as you open the door and take the elevator, you, uh, it, it takes you, if you have a six o'clock uh, uh, date to meet some people in the dining room, you better start out from your apartment about 20 of six because you're gonna meet people in the elevator, you're gonna meet people in the hallway and they're gonna stop and say, Diane, we have this book club today and you weren't there, you know, where were you? Or, um, you know, we, uh, we have this, this meeting this afternoon and I wanted to get in touch with you to make sure you knew about it. Or they would say, how's your daughter? I know that she wasn't feeling well. I mean, there's just, it, it, it's a family here. It's a family atmosphere. We are small enough that we know each other so that it's, um, it's, it's just, uh, you can't be down once you leave your apartment. If you hear some bad news about a member of your family or someone is sick and you leave your apartment, uh, you put it in back of your mind because there's so many other things that are going on here that, um, you know, that makes up for it. 
Well, so, Steve. And I'll let you in on one secret. When I left Charlottesville, I knew that my husband's days were numbered. And I, I really thought that I would move back to Charlottesville because that was my life for, for the last 14 years. But once I've moved uh, in, in here, I have no desire to move back. This is my home. This is my life. And these are my friends. Steve, uh, yeah. to underline what Diane has been saying, in this past year during the pandemic, no one here was lonely. We had each other throughout mm -hmm. the entire time. Even at the most isolated time, we could go outside, take walks with each other, and find ways to communicate. We were part of this family where everybody pretty well knows everybody else. It's been a, a lifesaver, I think, for us in this pandemic period. Can I jump in also and say, not only do the residents know each other, but the people who work here know us. When I say they know us, I will tell you that from the second day I moved here, everybody, every staff member called me by my name. I couldn't believe that they could assimilate that information so quickly and make that distinction. And whenever I walk anywhere in the building, I am greeted by name by a staff member. Sometimes I don't know their names. <laughs> well, and, and Derek, I'm glad you brought up this you know, crazy year that we've been through. And uh, fortunately, things are starting to open up and it's probably, I'm assuming there at Maplewood, things are beginning to get back to the way they were before yeah. COVID. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the, the fact that you are a part of a community and not isolated in your single family homes um, is, a huge benefit to living in a community like this, and um, and you know I'm I can tell by your comments that if you know something bad happened and we had another outbreak or something like that, that I'm assuming you all would have no question that you're living in the place where you can minimize your isolation and maximize your purpose. And we also did a, gave a gift to our our adult children because uh, during this whole time, they were terrified about what might happen to us. And the fact that we were being protected and cared for and caring for each other the way we were and that we were able to escape uh, the, uh, the deficit, the, the, uh, the horror of the pandemic was an enormous plus and it gave them confidence. And if we thought we were lucky and we thought we were happy, our children were even more so. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people that are researching life plan communities like the one that you're in. And uh, they often refer to it as Donald has, is, is that this is my gift. I don't wanna be a burden on my children. And that's why I'm making this choice. I also find that a lot of the people that do the research to move to communities like this, they've been through a caregiving experience with somebody in their life. And like you said, Donald, hey, the gift to my kids is that they don't have to worry about me that way. And it sounds like all of your kids, instead of a visit to mom and dad and being concerned about you, now it can be a real social visit or when they're calling you, it's not they're worried that you might be at home alone or fall. It's more to catch up with what you're doing. Um, what, what are the reactions to your children, you know, and, and living in the community? Uh, how do they like it? To second what uh, Donald said, um, our kids are just very pleased that we're here, so well protected. Uh, we had almost no incidents of, um, of COVID uh, in the past year. We got our vaccines earliest in January and uh, we, we lived in a kind of a bubble, but we had such warm people within that bubble during the time and we were safe. And again, a part of a community. 
Um, actually, a question just came in, and I this is a reminder. You guys are doing such a great job of sharing information that uh, um, you're answering all the questions before they can be asked. But but if anybody has a question, you can just type it into Q and A or raise your virtual hand. But this question is. Are there any shops within Maplewood to obtain necessities or perhaps a pharmacy? Within Maplewood itself, we have uh, an active bank. So you don't have to go anywhere. There's an ATM machine and an actual banking service uh, where you can open an account and do all of your business if you wish. We have um, a pharmacy not less, uh, less than a mile away, but there are pharmacies that actually deliver uh, prescriptions to Maplewood. And we have a lot of shopping, again, within two miles of the place, a mall, a couple of malls, and a lot of things that uh, can be done with, with large anchor stores, etc. At the oh. same time, we are living in an environment in which uh, uh, we have a lot of green around us, a lot of, uh, a lot of nice, warm uh, things to look at rather than looking at uh, uh, an, an, our totally urban environment. And we have, we have a market here that you pick up uh, all kinds of uh, groceries, fresh milk, fresh eggs, fresh yogurt, uh, bananas, apples, all that kind of thing, some, stand, some uh, canned food, some ice cream, cereals, uh, you don't need, if, if the weather is bad, you could uh, go in, in that the store and get most of your uh, basic needs. We also, they take care of, of all of the packaging and you, you don't have to go to a post office anymore. You buy stamps here and uh, they will help you wrap packages and get them to, uh, out to, to the post office or to FedEx or UPS, it's, um, it's just very convenient. Anytime you need any help with any of, of the things that, that, that you would have problems with if you were living by yourself, there's always somebody here that can help you, either in the business office or in the engineering department. I have a hearing loss and I wear hearing aids, but I decided to buy one of these over-the-counter uh, things that uh, to see, like if I went for a ride with my kids in the car, and if I'm in the back, even with my hearing aids, I don't hear the conversation in the front. So it came. I, I had no idea how to put it together or how to put the batteries in or anything. And that's all I did was call down and somebody came up right away and uh, fixed the whole thing for me and, and explained it to me. Just little things like this that um, that are so helpful that that you just would have to get in a car and go out to get some help, you know, uh, if you didn't live in a, a senior facility. Well, Diane, uh, you you touched on a couple of questions that just came in as a follow up. Is first um, that uh, are there resident do um, can you live at the community car free, like is there transportation if you wanted to go to the grocery store or a doctor's office? And then if you do have a car, is the owner parking outdoors or is it underground? I have a car, I still drive. There is underground uh, parking that's, um, that's available to every resident that moves in. And we have a transportation department they take us to all our medical appointments. They take us to the grocery store, the drug store, the liquor store. <laughs> Those are the important things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's all included. That's all part of, uh, of moving here. It's not, it's not extra charges for any of these things. So, so out of curiosity, do all three of you uh, uh, have cars and drive yourself or, or any of you uh, car free? I drive our car. It's in the garage underground here. Very safe. Uh, and we have one car now. We had two and my wife decided to give up her car 
to a granddaughter. So we have one car now, again, in the underground garage, very close to the elevator. So you just go up and down. Um, but uh, we do have a, a number of vehicles that belong to Maplewood, uh, some buses, some vans, and so on, to take people, large numbers of people to concerts and so on, uh, or one or two people to the doctor, to church, to shopping. Uh, and also, we, by the way, we have an IT director. If you have problems with your computer, you just call Ray and he comes up and helps you work out the problem. Wow, there that's... Are, there are a number of people that don't have cars anymore and they don't miss them. They okay, don't. good. Yeah, that's... I, I wanted to... Uh, I'm glad you touched on that. And then, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Kathleen Weber has a question. When you buy your own apartment in independent living and then need to move to memory care or assisted living or nursing, how is that transition executed? It, it doesn't seem like any of you have, because you've, you're all couples and you've utilized the the um the healthcare assisted living in healthcare but let's say somebody's single and they're living in independent living and then they would need to move to assisted or nursing do you know how that transition would be executed yes um if it's a temporary uh, move just to uh, skilled nursing care for rehab well you maintain the apartment you live in. And by the way, we have a life care program, which means you pay, if you pass the physical at the beginning, you pay only about half the usual amount to go to assisted living or skilled nursing care. Now, if it's a permanent move, yes, you would uh, no longer need, want to keep your apartment, so you'd put it up for sale. And you'd pay the per diem in the um, and skilled nursing or assisted living. Okay, great, great. Um, okay, let me check our Q and A queue. I, I don't see any additional questions that are coming in. And so I wanna just remind the audience that if you've got more questions, throw them in there. If not, don't worry, I'm gonna send you this recording with the contact information of the team there at Maplewood Park Place. So you could ask whatever detailed questions and they could certainly connect you with uh, these residents and other residents that would um, be able to also share their, um, their story. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, oh, okay. Lori, Lori asks, in considering coming to Maplewood, did you look at the quality of care of the assisted living and the nursing home components? Uh, is that something that any of you researched? But I guess, Diane, you've had firsthand experience in nursing and assisted living. Could you share sort of the, the quality of that care? It was very important and we did, we did research it and we did look we went downstairs and took and took a tour of the of the garden level, as we did at other places. Some didn't have it. Some, if if you became sick or you left the hospital, you had to go to another facility. You couldn't come back to to the uh, facility that that you lived in. Uh, but yes, we did we did research it. And I myself have had ma major surgeries. I've lived here and he came home from the hospital right downstairs and the care was excellent. Oh, care so you've, you've done your rehab there at- um... I, I've been down there several times, yeah. Oh, times. that's a, wow, what a great uh, service because those of you who've been in the hospital, you often know upon discharge, they say to you, well, you could go to a nursing and rehab center or you could go home, but your rehab's not gonna be as good at home because you're not gonna have people working with you. So now basically the nursing and rehab is right in your same building. So that's, and your friends are there, it's super convenient. 
it is so it, it's so assuring. Uh, I I was in a museum in Norfolk, Virginia, a year and a half ago. I missed a couple of steps, fell, and broke my arm. My daughter, uh, son-in-law, and two grandchildren were with me. They had to take me to the hospital. They set it and they put it in a sling and all that. And then they said, now what, Bob? I said, now your problems are over. I said, we just call Maplewood and tell them I'm on my way. And okay. they did that and they, they just couldn't believe it when we got here. I mean, first of all, they put me outside. They came outside, they had a wheelchair if I could walk, but they, they had a wheelchair for me and they were with me. They gave me this beautiful room. It was all set up and um, the care was phenomenal. And I'm home. I mean, if I need something in my apartment, that's all I do is I ask one of the aides and they come up here and get me another bathrobe or whatever I needed. And um, I mean, it, it, was, uh, it was just like, like, like being at home. And, and my kids had no worries. They knew I was well cared for. And they, they call, as uh, Dirk said, they call you by, by name, they know you, they come in all the time to ask, how are you doing? What do you need? So it was, um, it was very comforting. Your question was uh, originally, uh, how do we come to make the, the, the research to find out what was available? I actually engaged a care manager who uh, came out and visited and came back with a glowing report. In terms of care, I also want to say that recently I had a, uh, a difficulty with a, a disc issue and uh, I've been able to have intensive physical therapy right here in the building. And that sometimes skilled nursing facilities or assisted living may be on the same campus, but not in the same building. Here, everything is under one roof. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I wanted to, to kind of point out again is that in terms of your children, not only are you giving them the gift, they don't have to worry about you, but you're preserving the asset that you have in terms of uh, not running through all of your money before you actually uh, die so that you're in a sense providing them with an assurance uh, financially that you're in good hands and that you will retain that quality of life that you want. That's great. Um, let's see. A uh, few more questions. It always comes in when I say, well, we're wrapping up. Uh, so uh, Michael asks, what percentage of the board, the board of directors are residents? Um, <laughs> well, we have two boards. Um, one is the co-op board that uh, covers the residential units. Uh, all five board members are residents. The other is the services board that covers uh, the services and the uh, skilled nursing care and assisted living uh, and the, the grounds. And that has two residents and um, five outside experts to, um, who are very experienced in this, these various fields and uh, can give us good um, advice and guidance. And um, th th that's great. And then, um, okay, a few questions, because you had mentioned in the scenario, one of you had mentioned in the scenario about, um, let's say that you moved out of your, you're in assisted living permanently, and now you sell your, um, your unit. Uh, is there, a, a staff to help with that, or do you do you hire a realtor? How do you how do you do that? It may absolutely. There's a staff. There's a whole sales and marketing uh, department, and they will um, advertise and help you negotiate um, to get the price you hope to get. Uh, but yes, we get a lot of help along that line. And then um, Diane, since you were talking about uh, rehab, um, one thing that, to point out is that when you're uh, coming back from rehab, 
that would be covered under Medicare, um, I believe, the, for the rehab. And I was just looking on your website, and this addresses the previous question on quality. It looks like Maplewood has a five-star rating um, for, from CMS. So mm -hmm. th th there's a couple of little touch points to speak to the quality of care. Right, right. And I, I didn't realize how few um, skilled nursing centers have a five-star rating. It's extremely difficult to get a five-star rating. They, they go through every single detail of the care down, downstairs, and we've gotten a five-star rating. That's great. Well, wow, look at this. Uh, we are at three o'clock here. Perfect timing. I have one last uh, question that's really a comment, and I think it's a great way to wrap up a great discussion. It says, uh, you three are wonderful representatives of Maplewood Park Place, and I really, I can't agree with that statement uh, more. As I had mentioned at the beginning of this, this is the first time that we've done something like this, and uh, I really want to thank you all for just your comments and sharing your life experience. And I wanna thank the audience for participating and asking such good good questions. I think that uh, I'm, I'm real excited to continue with these type of discussions because I think it really gives people a glimpse in all three of you talked about how difficult this decision was to make, but all three of you have really reiterated how it's probably one of the best decisions that you have made. And, uh, and I, think, I think it's important that we reinforce that to the public, um, no matter what direction people choose. Um, so any closing comments for the three of you, or can we uh, wrap this up and... Uh, um, I'll, I'll send the recording out to everybody. Thank you for having us. Yes. We, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed talking, talking about it. Great. It's almost Our, as enjoyable as talking about your grandchildren. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, we will see you at the next one. And everybody have a great Memorial Day.